Okay, so we're gonna start by opening Bridge. Bridge's UI is pretty straightforward, and really simple. Um, it's a very similar to Lightroom. Um, so you can see there's a bunch of pictures on this card that I haven't really gone through. Um, but there is a ton of sorting features on the left hand panel. So I'm just gonna sort it by photos that I've taken today um, for that purpose. The rating system is also super useful for just sorting photos in general. Um, it really helps to, you know, just weed out the bad ones before you get into your actual, like, workflow. So, of course, you can adjust the grid size. I mean, that's kind of just like a given with software at this point. Um, you can see where I did on those last three pictures that shared at the multiple exposures. Um, I'll cover that at a different time. Um, just because I didn't have a good sky. My sky was literally just white overcast. So I'm going to highlight all the photos. I'm going to take them into Camera Raw um, by just right clicking and going into Camera Raw. I'm just going to edit them. You can select them in groups on the left. So you can do all the same edits to the same photos if they're similar taken in the same spot. It really cuts down editing time. Um, you know, your lens correction profiles are really great and useful tools as well. So is defringing, you know, get that purple and get that green cast out, out of things that are defocusing. Um, so yeah. Um, you can also, if there's a photo that made it into Camera Raw that you don't want to use, you can just hit the delete key, it'll make a red X over it, it won't actually delete it, but it'll, it will remove its rating and it will remove it from that library so that you uh, don't have to deal with it, which is pretty convenient. Um, but like I said, it doesn't delete it, so you can see that cut down on my library a good bit because I did a good bit of hitting the delete key. So right now, what I want to highlight that I'm doing is I'm selecting every photo. I went up to Tools, Photoshop, Photo Merge, and I did Auto. If you do much more than that, like, you know, apply geometric distortion correction, apply vignette correction, that's all stuff you should have done beforehand. If you do that in this process, you are literally going to sit there for decades. So by combining a bunch of pictures that stitch together, which by the way, they need to be shot at an equivalent focal length of 100 millimeters or 85 millimeters at the absolute widest. But it, so you can see that there's a lot of different pieces of pictures used in this, and there's a lot of blank space. So you get a crop it, which kind of sucks because it's like, oh damn, like, look at all that picture. Like that's so many pictures. That's on a 100 millimeter shot at f 2.0. Um, so you can see that super just medium format look that you wouldn't be able to get normally. So this is just playing with some crop um, just to you know look at it. That's the 2.39 crop, which is CinemaScope. This is 16.9. This is what we're used to looking at kind of every day. You can see the difference. Um, 2.39 is a lot tighter. Um, it's usually a lot wider as well. Um, so I didn't do too much editing on this just because I wasn't concerned with it at that point. So that's the size of a normal picture. So that's how much data that you're getting extra when you do the Brenizer method. You really are getting that medium format, like, you know, 80 megapixel picture that you can zoom in on all the way. And it's, you know, tack sharp, but so what I'm looking for right now are defects. And the defects that I found mainly in this photo were defringing. Defringing is, is a green and purple tone that tends to hover around areas that are distinct color borderlines. So after going back in and editing them, well, I'll get to that in a second. Um, so this is the HDR, again, tools, Photoshop, um, merge, 
charge to HDR. So this is using three different exposures and you can see that purple and that green, that is defringing. That's what I'm talking about. Little arrows pointing at it. Um, so that's no good, you don't want that. So, this is kind of just the difference between the two and then that's the large format, if you will. So I'm gonna go back in, do some edits to my chair photo, get rid of that, you know, defringe, get rid of that, which is really easy. Just literally click it up in the, uh, in camera raw. And after I've done that, done all my lens corrections, maybe play with the color some, you know, that's always fun. Split tone it a little bit, or, you know, play with the, say, saturation levels, which you'll see me do with the greens and the blues in a second, just to kind of pull that out, make it kind of just more exciting, more fun, a little bit more live looking, I don't know, um, just more vibrant. You can see the histogram reacts well to the change in color, which is always a good thing. Um, so this is preparing. So since I did the photo merge with this before, and I know it was successful, and I know how it's gonna frame out, now I'm actually caring about editing and saying, okay, I wanna recover these shadows, you know, stuff like that. Um, go do that. Then I'm gonna photo merge it again. This time it'll have a really clean edit to it that's really concise as opposed to being kind of roughly thrown together. But I do, I do find that those photos tend to be just kind of outstanding in and of themselves. Just, I mean, look at how many photos that it's going into one photo. I mean, look, that's a big list. Um, at 20, you know, 20 megapixels each. So, some pretty fun stuff. Now, as soon as this is done, get into the last thing which is anamorphic um yeah look at how clean the edit is it's a lot better you know you can already tell there's more detail the color is more there this just looks a lot more right and then we crop it you really get that like medium format like how it's just taken look zoomed in you can see you get a lot of detail really sharp really easy to do it's not a hard technique at all. So now we're gonna open up the anamorphic photos, just gonna run a quick edit on them. Um, there's not too terribly much you can really do with them other than, you, know, you can defringe them, you can do all that stuff. But I mean, you know, there's, uh, well, you know, they're not really as limiting as I'm making it sound. That's wouldn't sharpen while they're like this. So all you do is go to image size and you stretch it by 200% and that decompresses the image. So you saw the image was compressed before it was squished and it's because the anamorphic lens is by, that's what it's, its characteristic trait is, is squishing the image by a certain amount and two times is usually the max. So lastly, here's some footage. Um, I have all the focal lengths and everything down below. I've made some Cinemorph mods for lenses and they I can make a lens look like it's anamorphic. See the oval aperture or the oval defocusing. Um, it's pretty, that, that's, you know, extremely characteristic. That's the desired trait in anamorphic a lot of times. Throw some crop marks on there and you're good. You know, just like I did with the chair earlier. Like I said, forgive me, didn't have a tripod with me, I need to order a new uh, quick release plate, but it's all good. This is just, you know, dialing through the focus. Also, the sky was dead ass white, like it was actually frustrating. <laughs> So I didn't even bother color grading this footage or anything. So this is real anamorphic that's been decompressed and it's, you know, video. 
you can kind of see, like, you know, why I really like this stuff. It's really cool. Um, I did a little bit of color grading on these for sure. Um, not much, though. They didn't need too much. I shot all this in my backyard. It's like that's commendable. really adds a cinematic feel to literally anything, even just painting through the bushes and the lounge chairs in my backyard looks like there's something suspiciously dramatic afoot, or I don't know, just very cinematic. <laughs> <laughs> 